Welcome back, folks. And we are still in the beautiful Nelson Mandela Bay, experiencing all the magic that you can find right here in this beautiful city. Today, we are at the Art Route 67. And this Art Route starts from the Campanile here in Strand Street in the beautiful city of Port Elizabeth. And I've got Liesl Nivert from Umzanzi Tours with me today. Liesl, come join me here. Hi, Hi, how are you? I'm good. Hi, Sharon. Thank you. Very good. Awesome, awesome. So, tell me a little bit about this Art Route 67. Where are we going to start? What are we going to do? Okay, so Sharon, um, Route 67 basically celebrates the 67 years that Nelson Mandela fought for freedom. So, obviously, as the name suggests, it's all around art. We're actually going to start here at the Campanile and then we're going to do it's basically a walking tour through a section of the city going to look at different art pieces there's a variety of sculptures there's mosaics etc uh, and then we'll end up at one of our galleries fantastic it sounds absolutely awesome and guys that is what you need to do we need to all be tourists in our own country okay so Liesl tell me a little bit more I see you've got a little pamphlet there for me Can we have yes a yes absolutely so this is the map that goes with the route if you want to we can open it up quickly absolutely. so some of the sites are still in uh, process they haven't been opened up yet but um, you will notice you'll recognize a few of the ones as we go so there's the freeze etc um, it's a very handy little map that guests can take with them once they've done the route just to also remind themselves of what they've seen this looks absolutely amazing okay so you mentioned that we're starting at the freeze what is That's the correct. freeze where is the freeze and how do we get to the freeze <laughs> all right so if you want to see the freeze you literally have to turn around <laughs> okay so, all right so this is absolutely where it starts amazing. yes so this is basically a celebration of our indigenous people's history um, you can see it's quite a big one and the different cultures represented here the Kosas obviously from the Eastern Cape there's also Muslim so there's one of the um, mosques and then so this represents history culture the musicians the poets of the indigenous people it is absolutely amazing and I see it's quite huge it is quite huge yes so it basically tells a whole story fantastic <laughs> okay so we are under the flyovers now and what are we looking at here Liesl okay so Sharon <clears throat> there are a whole lot of paintings on these pillars and they're representing the different cultures of the city so if you look around you can see colored faces black faces there's an Indian girl white faces um, it's just coming together of all of us uh, two of my favorites down here represent the Kosa specifically and some of their traditions so on the right hand side a painting always amuses me the people sitting on the cow so that obviously represents the Labola and then just behind us is uh, the Abaquetas um, for circumcision okay fantastic right Liesl so we are at a fountain here and what does this represent in terms of an artwork okay so yeah the fountain this is the walk of words and um, so what they trying to represent here is the water spilling out into these colorful bricks and it's just a reference to all of our different languages Aww. so the bricks each have a word on it quite a a popular strong word and it's in different languages that we have in South Africa oh that is so cool yeah you guys absolutely need to see this it's absolutely beautiful looks to me like a giant fishbone <laughs> what have we got here yes you are 100 percent correct it is a fishbone so um along the art route there are quite a few references to the ocean 
obviously we are a port. Um, back in the day, we had a little makeshift harbour in Jeppe Street. So this actually represents that connection between Jeppe Street and the city. So in the olden days, the ships would have docked there. Obviously, we didn't have these roads, and they would have come across here, and this would have been the market. Oh, fantastic. How clever is that? Love it. Well, I've always wondered about these taxis on the wall. Okay, the taxi wall. What is with the taxis? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is always a conversation piece. People are fascinated by it. Um, it's, it's pretty simple. It's basically just a reference to the most popular form of transport in the city. Um, if ever you've dealt with these, you know, you either hate them or you love them. I think most people hate them. So, yeah, it's just a reference to the local transport system. And it is actually quite fantastic. I mean, yeah. you know, I can see why people are fascinated by these yeah. because I was when I first saw them. Yeah. <laughs> Very well done. I always joke to people, this is what happens when you ride in a taxi, you end up in a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> right, Liesl, so we've got some interesting paving going on here. What is the story behind the paving? All right, so Sharon, we starting to head up to my favorite spot in the city the Duncan Reserve um, and you'll see a lot of references here to the 1994 first democratic elections so starting at the bottom here this is basically the masses coming together to join the voting line okay fascinating yeah. okay you can actually see the the idea behind yes it. absolutely all right so where are we going now okay so we're gonna start heading up the steps um, the steps all the way up have got mosaics on them and you will see as we go it starts out at the bottom it's very dark and as we go up it gets lighter and lighter so it's basically our history in South Africa starting with a not so nice history that no one wants to forget yes. um, and then when we get to the top it's bright and it's clear and the new South Africa fantastic okay well let's go let's go Alright Sharon, so as I mentioned at the bottom, this area appears very much about the 1994 democratic elections. So what they did when they laid out this path, this is a skateboard path actually. Okay. So when it was laid out, they got 3,000 school kids to come and stand here and they drew crosses at some of their feet. So it's fading a little bit, but if you look at some of the, you can see some names. There's a Antoinette Greef, for instance. So that was literally Antoinette Greef standing there, making her cross for the vote. Oh, lovely! That is absolutely lovely. Yeah. What an insane idea! Perfect. So clever. Okay, so we're standing underneath a really big, funny-looking bird here. Um, can you tell us a little bit more? Absolutely. Uh, this is called fish bird. Okay, so there's, as guides, we hear a lot of stories about things, but this was sculpted by a local artist called Duncan Stewart, and there is another piece that he did for Route 67, which I will point out. Um, it's basically the bird coming back to the Duncan, that is probably why she's facing this way, um, to reclaim the site. Okay, it's a very important site for the city. Um, stories that I've heard is that when Duncan sculpted it, he made it very large like this. So on a very hot day, it casts a nice big shadow for people to stand under. And I've also heard that it's a connection again with us, with the ocean, a fish and a bird combined, so an albatross and a fish. 
fantastic. And you know what? I actually know Duncan Stewart. So kudos to you, Duncan. Love the fish bird. <laughs> you can recognize whether it's a, a black lady, a white person. Yeah. He is doves and his babies and dogs like the whole dude. Fantastic. around this awesome boating line and just tell us a little bit about this specific artwork. All right Sharon, um, yeah it's one of my favorites for sure. Um, I just love it because as you walk as South Africans we can see the representation of the Kosa ladies with their traditional wear or the white guys in suits and these dogs and doves and all of that and then obviously with this great man in the front anyone in the world I'm sure will recognize this um, it was just an incredible time in our history if you've lived through it we have yes um, yeah it's a very special art piece to me I love it absolutely and this is also such an iconic um, stance for Madiba to be in and I think that is how we all remember the great man himself absolutely yeah Okay, so we're standing right here at this amazing, huge mosaic, okay. Um, I think I mentioned to you that I get freaked out just thinking about doing a tiny little mosaic. And this is absolutely huge. What does this beautiful artwork represent and, yeah, how big, how big is it actually? Right, Sharon, yes, this is 470 square meters. Wow. So, yes, if, um, obviously, if you look at the size of the tiles, it would have taken them a while. <laughs> um, yes. Apparently, it was designed by the art department at the university. Um, and this is just a representation of the Eastern Cape and also the city. So, inside the big mosaic, you have seven smaller ones. Um, and if you want, we can just take a slow walk down and I can just point out. So this basically covers like history, wildlife, the cultures, agriculture, etc. Fantastic. Shall okay, I point it yes, out to you? All right. So outside of the smaller circles, you have these other ones. This would be like recreational activities and sport and so on. Inside the circles, this first one here. Eastern Cape wildlife we all know that yes. so we have four national parks and a variety of private game reserves so this just celebrates this is our biggest attraction in the Eastern Cape absolutely all right. I have wildlife. to agree with you on that yeah definitely definitely all right moving along again I mentioned there's a lot of connection to the ocean because we are a port so you've got the waves over here and then I don't know if you figured out that these are the Container ships. Oh my word! Yes, that we can actually see out in the yes, harbour there. Now that you mention it. Yes. Okay. All right, and then the anchor, obviously. This is so phenomenal. And then just also on the outside, these iconic symbols of South Africa, Nguni cattle. We saw one earlier, just down at the freeze. Yes. You know your dung beetles, aloes. So it's very. It's not just Eastern Cape. It's South Africa also. Absolutely fascinating. All right, the third circle here is a little bit of a reference to industry. So in the Eastern Cape, car manufacturing, yes. Volkswagen, obviously. So this is a little bit of homage to Volkswagen. Fantastic. All right, agriculture in the Eastern Cape. So. There are smaller pockets where you might have avocados and so on, but obviously for us, the main ones here are the citrus yes. in Addo Valley, pineapples from Alexandria, yes. and the apples from the Langkloof. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so we're standing next to another very interesting looking mm -hmm. sculpture. 
what is this first and foremost and who is the artist? All right, so um, this is the second sculpture that was done by Duncan Stewart, the local guy. Uh, he calls this River Memory. So in the 1850s, believe it or not, there used to be a little stream that used to flow down the road here. Oh my word, now that's another piece of history that I did not know. Yes, yeah. Amazing. Most people don't know it, so he did this sculpture as a remembrance of that and also to, to remind us to conserve water, which these days is a little bit too close for comfort, but yes. And a lot of people believe that when the wind blows through here, it makes a noise. It doesn't actually, it's not vocal, it's just that reminder of the little stream. So the lady and the chair, what is she doing and why is she here? Okay, so Sharon, I always joke with art, I think different people see different things. So this is actually untitled, although as guides we literally call it Lady with Chair. Okay, <laughs> so the sculptor for this one was Anton Momberg. And what we normally tell people, again, that's our perspective, but I think it's a nice story, is she represents all the women who had a role to play in the history of Port Elizabeth. And if you look at her features, you can't actually distinguish whether she's black, white or brown, because she's supposed to represent everyone. And she is inviting you to sit on the chair so she can talk to you. Fantastic. Yeah. I actually, I'm going to go with that representation yeah. because I like that. Yes. Yeah, me Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Definitely me so too. So she definitely represents female power. Yes. Awesome. We love it. <laughs> And I see that we've got um, a lot of aloes on a lot of rocky terrain. Um, this garden, you know, to me looks like where I come from, sort of Fort Beaufort area. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what is with this, this garden here behind us? All right, so I'm sure that some avid gardeners might be horrified by this because it it can look a bit scruffy, but it actually was landscaped like this, specifically to represent, like you said, the East, Eastern Cape bush. It makes sense. You recognize it. So it's all indigenous plants, like you mentioned, the aloes and the bush around here. So even though sometimes it looks a bit scruffy, this is what we know is our felt. Absolutely. Even the iconic acacia trees, you know, the thorn trees, they're right here. Yes. And then I see in front of us here, we've got these some more very, very pretty mosaics. Yes. So they scattered around here. These ones basically are little iconic symbols of the city and the area. So um, I would like to point out three specifically to you since we're in this area here. Um, all right, so the one where we've just been, so this is the Donkin, and that's the giant flag, which unfortunately today is not up due to the strong wind. Okay. All right. Um, as a matter of interest, that would be the largest flag in Africa. Wow. So wow. definitely worth seeing. All right. Such a pity we can't show our viewers that flag today. For sure. It's a sight to behold. Absolutely. This one, iconic, Protea. Our oh, national yes, flower, yes. all right. And then Ibai, just one of the many names of Port Elizabeth. Awesome, fantastic. Okay, so we're at the Anthenaeum right now, and there's also some awesome artworks here. Something that, some things that, you know, like I'm, I'm drawn to color. So mm -hmm. once again, another mosaic and a pillar. <laughs> So what does this represent? I'm actually glad that you mentioned a mosaic and a pillar because this, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's beautiful, but when people actually realize what's going on here, it blows them away. And it, it always ends up being people's favorite piece. Um, so this is called Harmony in Nature. Um, and this apparently was used quite often, this technique by Da Vinci and Michelangelo. Wow. And what blows people away 
is if you look at it again as a South African you'll recognize something so we have the blue crane our national bird there's proteas there's a gecko etc but if you stand back just a little bit and you look from the mosaic and you look up on the pillar the picture is reflected in the pillar as a the right side up fantastic that is amazing yeah that is actually amazing wow like I said, mind-blowing. Totally, totally mind-blowing. You can actually walk around, you'll see the pictures change. I mean, standing here, I can see this bird reflected. He's standing up. Yes, yes. And the proteas are actually the right way up. Yes. And they actually almost look three-dimensional in the pillar. Yes, because down there, I wouldn't necessarily go, oh, that's a protea, until you look in the pillar. That is amazing. Incredible. Wow. This is a beautiful, beautiful, mind-blowing artwork. You guys need to come and see this. Mm -hmm. Come to this beautiful place. Come to the Eastern Cape and be a tourist in your own country. Okay, so on the inside of this very pretty building, the Anthenaeum, I see there's many sculptures. Mm -hmm. Can you just give us a little bit of information on what this is and what it represents? Sure. Um, all right, so these tall sculptures here are some of our freedom fighters. Everyone will recognize the names, and they're all from the Eastern Cape. Okay. So Governor Becky, as we all know, that's also our main roads um, name. Um, Steve Biko, I mean, who doesn't know Steve Biko, for sure. Absolute icon. Yeah, absolute icon. Um, there are more on that side, but we'll get to them now. And then you have these two... The sculptures here, it's called a seated couple. All right, so they're basically just here to welcome you to the Anthenaeum. Oh, how cool is yeah. that? So you have and a welcoming committee. For sure. And they carved out of um, Oregon pine. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Now we're standing right here in front of a, literally a beaded wall, mm -hmm. okay, different art pieces, individual art pieces, but they are spectacular, they're stunning. What is the story here? How did this happen? All right, so like I mentioned right in the beginning, Route 67 is to celebrate the 67 years at Madiba Fort for Freedom, and this represents a year in that lifespan call it that so it starts from 1942 to 2009 and each beaded work represents something important from that specific year so for instance this one we've been talking the whole time about the 94 elections yes. so there's your first democratic elections fantastic and then yeah all represented in the beaded works and these were created by 29 ladies and one gentleman oh fantastic yeah wonderful yeah. it's I mean, it's just incredibly pretty, you know, and yeah. yet the pretty tells a fantastic story. For sure. So this is pretty much then where Route 67 culminates with these beaded works. Absolutely awesome. It is stunning, guys. Once again, and I've said this before, I'm going to say it again, be that tourist in your own country and come and see these things. They are magnificent. Okay, Liesl, so where are we now and what does this beautiful wall behind us represent? Okay, Sharon, so this is called Art EC. It's one of our galleries in the city. And basically, if you look at the wall, it's kind of like a mirror to the city. So again, celebrating the different cultures. So if you look at the faces, you can recognize different races. So it's just a celebration of everyone who lives in our city. Fantastic. Well, Liesl, thank you so, so much. This has been absolutely phenomenal and your knowledge absolutely blows my mind. Some of the artworks that I've seen and I've lived in PE for a while, okay, I never knew existed. So this has been educational, it's been fun, it's been fabulous. So thank you from me to you and viewers out there, we need to support our local tour guides, we need to support our local tourism do local support local guys thank you so much
guys, there's great excitement here today as we head off into the bay with raggy charters, hoping to find some sharks so that we can do some shark cage diving. But let's go and see what this beautiful, amazing bay of ours has to offer. Uh, Raggy Charters started in 1997. We've been operating for 23 years. We've got a 100% safety record. We've won the Lalizela Tourism Awards for the best marine tour operation in South Africa on four occasions, and we've won the Provincial Awards five times. So we're obviously doing, according to our customers, we're doing something right. Now, guys, we left the Yacht Club in the Port Elizabeth Harbour at around 7 a.m. this morning. Travelled about 80 kilometres across the mouth of the bay and we've just arrived at the Bird Island Group. And as you guys can see, the ocean is rough and the seals are smelly and noisy. Now, just for information, the Raggy Charters Shark Cage Diving Tour is an all-inclusive full-day tour that covers every corner of Algawa Bay. And they run it from April through to September. Now this is where we will hopefully have our shark cage diving experience and um, the cage has been lowered and is being prepared. Now with the other thing guys that I need to just mention is that Raggy Charters have tried and tested and fine-tuned this three-man cage and with the recessed hand and foot rails you are not only safe but you're also comfortable inside the cage. Um, yeah, well, I grew up in Port Elizabeth, walking around barefoot, bucket clonky on the shores of Algoa Bay, fishing in the Sun Swat Cops River when I was five, catching fish and spear fishing later on, uh, scuba diving, taking out divers, and I just felt like I wanted to to contribute something, to do something. So I, I changed careers, sort of midway in my life. I made a 180 turn and no money, and just you know. Somehow, somehow we managed to get it together. Ah, no, Ven, as they say, and yeah, here we are today. We've got three beautiful boats, um, and we've managed to go through COVID. And we've every day we try and put back into the marine environment. So we're off to see the gannets now on the other island, guys, and also enjoyed a packed lunch. And I'll just have you guys know that this particular colony of Cape Gannets is the largest colony in the entire world. Just look at them. Aren't they precious? Unfortunately, the, you know, before COVID, we were 95% international clients, and we've now changed around to 95% local clients. So it's been a huge thing, and I think that it's good for the future because what's happening now is that locals are getting to know us better. Often we take people on the boat and they say, oh, oh we didn't know there were whales, we didn't know there was a sardine run, we didn't know that there was southern right whales, we didn't know all of this stuff. The locals, it doesn't matter how many articles you put in newspapers, locals just don't get to know. And we feel like we're getting through to them now. We've been doing some advertising on Goa FM. So I think that bides well for the future because when the international people do start coming back, we've got a lot more local people that know about us and it'll bring the people to us and to some of the other operators. Guys, this bay is honestly just huge and it's beautiful and it's teeming with life. We're going to run inshore now to the Alexandria dune fields and this is the longest mobile dune field in the entire world. It is also a favorite spot for raggy charters to observe the bottlenose dolphin surfing in the waves. So let's hope we're going to see some. And these beautiful, pristine backdrops of these dunes makes for the most amazing photographic opportunities. It really is just stunning. It is something to behold and something to see. You guys really do need to come and see this. It is so phenomenal. 
yeah, it was a pleasure taking you guys out today. And um, yeah, as nature is, sometimes you don't go and see what you plan to see. In this case, the sharks, they weren't there, it was a little bit rough. But, um, you know, we got to see 250,000 gannets on the island, which is really cool. We got a little bit of history of the island. And then, of course, we headed on to Woody Cape, which is the largest mobile dune system in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, beautiful place, nice, and nobody there, not even a, a footprint on the sand dune. And then we got about, uh, I'd say about 200 dolphins surfing on the waves there. They surf down the front of the wave and pop out the back, which is really cool to see. And then we were off to St. Croix to see the penguins. They're always there. They start markers. You can't miss them. And of course, then we bumped into, I would say, probably about 800 dolphins. Uh, we are the bottlenose dolphin capital of the world. We've got about 28,000 dolphins that use our bay. So, yeah, to see them and to see them in full flight, I think, is amazing. We were actually looking for some uh, little or large black fins behind them because we've had a lot of killer whales in the last couple of weeks in the bay. So, yeah, and then um, we got back here quite exhausting, you know, whole day, 10, 10 hours on the boat. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, this is what we do to raise money. Um, so we use this, this beautiful boat that we have here that, that brings in the money, and we then use that to fund our conservation project. We've been running that since 1992, so we, this is our 29th year. Uh, and very briefly, we do a lot of education at the schools, uh, especially from the previous disadvantaged communities. We give talks at the university, Rotary, Roundtable, men's groups, any groups, anybody that would want us, um, we, we will give a talk. And then we do, we've been assisting scientists for the last 28 years. And um, that's been great because of our work on penguin research that we've assisted with this whole area that we were in today has been declared a marine protected area, and which is great. So all the animals that we saw today are protected in that area. No one can go and interfere with them. And we feel like we've, we've done something to contribute towards that. Uh, we've been working on the, if you see behind me, the calamari boats. We've been helping there with the plastic pollution. Uh, we've recently had the minister um, re-look at the, um, the Dermasol shark long lining industry. These people have been catching it. too many sharks, we believe, unregulated industry, but of public pressure. The minister orders an inquiry, which is great. And the next trick up our sleeve is we're going to take on the bunkering, you know, the ship to ship bunkering. They haven't done an environmental impact assessment and we've asked for a legal opinion on that and we'll take that First of all, who have done canoeing before? I will 
have to guys one for one because I have to get checked up there before I leave it. Oh god, I need I want to see a capsize. to the overnight hut guys and it is absolutely stunning the paddle here is challenging but not too hard so I honestly believe anybody even with an average fitness level can do this okay so let's hear from the crowd how they found it Tony yeah well even for people that are in their 60s <laughs> uh, no re really a enjoyable day out uh, the weather was great the company was awesome and it's really uh, really just a great day to be out paddling uh, gives your shoulders a nice little bit of workout Indeed. not too strenuous but certainly a nice little challenge uh, and we're hoping that the wind will play ball and actually take us home <laughs> not like it did in the way here <laughs> true story hey yeah. So it is really something special guys. The bird life here is amazing. I mean we went for a run just now and some of us, unfortunately not me, but some of us saw kudu. It is just absolutely beautiful out here. You know, if you really want to get in touch with nature, spend some time outdoors, this is an excellent little adventure to come to. It is affordable, it is fabulous, it's amazing. Um, I just really believe it's one of the nicest things that you can do. As we said, the most fun you can have legally. Yeah. Guys, it's Monday morning and we are about to paddle back and as you can see it is actually raining and the wind is against us today so from awesome weather yesterday about 30 32 degrees paddling here um, we are now going to paddle back in the rain but you know what as with everything else every dark cloud has a silver lining at least we won't be hot today back we had an awesome fantastic amazing canoe trip i definitely recommend that everybody should do this it was just stunning and now for a very exciting part we at a taste of africa restaurant and we are gonna have lunch and i've got kelly here with me again and kelly's gonna tell us all about this amazing restaurant it is just rustic it's beautiful it's stunning the setting is lovely Kelly, how long has this restaurant been going and what do you guys serve here? <laughs> Perfect. 
Yeah, no, it's been going since 2015. We obviously started with the tours first and then we opened up the restaurant there afterwards. Um, so what we serve is anything traditionally from burgers to pizzas to steaks to you, you name it, anything that's delicious. So yeah, we do our own roasted work here now as well. And we've got delicious desserts with our triple layer chocolate cake and chocolate brownies which have lint in them. So oh definitely gosh. worth tasting those things. <laughs> scrumptious delicious meal and we will see you guys next time in J Bay. Bye!